We have our Olympic moment here. Uh, we have a Canadian Olympic champion, a Commonwealth champion in the discus throw. Uh, Olympics uh, happening in Paris at the end of July, beginning of August. Boris, welcome to Contact. Our, our... Uh, thank you. Now, tell us, how long does it take to get ready for the Olympics? Well, it took me approximately eight years of preparation. So I, w I started when I was 15 at Camp Veselka when uh, uh, a, f a fellow by the name of Bill Lebuc came up to me. I was 15 and he said, uh, here are three books, a shot put discus and javelin. You have one week to learn how to throw it because we're having a competition at Veselka. So that's how it started. A year later, I met my coach who coached me from age 15 to, uh, to, to the two Olympics I competed on. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be trained by him, had uh, several scholarships to the United States, um, qualified for the 76 Olympics, um, had a very successful year except for the Olympics. Um, won the uh, NCAA's Pac-8 conference, set a Canadian and Commonwealth record and NCAA record. Um, but unfortunately, didn't do as well as I planned on at the Olympics, so I made a few mis technical errors. So the next two years to prepare for the Commonwealth Games, uh, I trained and I was able to win that competition. Uh, then competed, uh, took a year off from 79 to 80 to get ready for the Moscow Olympics. And uh, unfortunately, we boycotted, but I had a fantastic year competing. And, uh, and then I retired at 82, uh, 1982 and started my career as a doctor of chiropractic. So Boris, tell, tell, us, tell us about the Olympics in Moscow that you didn't attend. Right. So like how, like here you are preparing, wanting to be there. Yeah. Uh, what does it feel like uh, being part of a boycott? And yeah. to what extent do you even now looking at it later feel was justified or not? Well, because I didn't uh, compete up to par in the first Olympics when I was 23, I did manage to salvage uh, my, my sanity and, and won the 78 uh, Commonwealth Games, did well in the Pan American Games, but I was putting all my eggs in one basket because I knew that uh, 1980 was going to be my last Olympics because I was uh, preparing for a career in chiropractic medicine. And it was very frustrating. I was training uh, with one of the American um, uh, ex-Olympic uh, 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 medalists and also ex-world record holder. And my year went really well. I took a year off everything. My brother and I trained full time. Um, and I spent some time in California with this uh, um, other American thrower. So when I got the news that uh, we were boycotting, I wasn't very happy. Um, but that was plan A, so we had to work through it. Uh, coming from a Ukrainian background, I understood the, the brutality of Russia, so you know, I accepted the boycott, but I wasn't very happy. In fact, it took me probably 20 years of watching uh, the Olympics. I didn't start watching the Olympics till 20 years after the 1980, because every time the Olympics came on, I turned the channel. Uh, and then in 2000, I was ready to um, get involved with the Olympic movement again as a doctor of chiropractic. And uh, that's how... Uh, and then today, I'm still very fond of the Olympics, um, and I'll, I work with some athletes uh, regarding their rehabilitation of uh, athletic injuries. Now, <clears throat> you know, the, sort of relating to the boycott, but somehow not, mm -hmm. uh, we have the Paris Olympics. Yeah. Uh, what would you tell uh, an athlete that, uh, that you know for whatever reason that was going to be his or her last Olympic? Yeah. What, would, what would be your advice to them? Well, my, my advice to them would be enjoy every moment, you know, when you're at the Olympics because uh, it's a fantastic uh, experience. I remember walking into the Montreal Stadium and you had goosebumps, you turned, you know, you, you can't exp experience that unless you're actually there. So uh, my, uh, my view is you never know if you'll be able to make another Olympic, so enjoy every moment, compete as if it was your last competition, do your best and then you live with the results, but enjoy every moment. I, I have many great moments. Obviously, the high moments are more uh, impressive than the, uh, uh, the failures, but that's part of, uh, part of life. You win some, you lose some. But, uh, like, I don't, I don't know if this works in, in the discus world, yeah. right? Yes. But uh, what, what, is, what, is, what is the feeling as you're, as you're throwing 
as you're throwing the disc, as you're you're doing your ballet before you before you throw it out. <laughs> well, like, it's, what's it feel like if you know you're you're at the top, or you know that you're you're yeah. the one that's going to be winning this guy? Well, if if uh, the, the the thing I can kind of equate to, if if somebody is a golfer and they hit the perfect uh, hit on the ball, it, it's effortless. It goes a long way, and you get the satisfaction of watching it fly. So I love doing it. I love training. Um, it was my passion. Uh, I chose fitness, you know, I, I, I liked the Greek ideal where you had the uh, body, mind and spirit. And so uh, I enjoyed the training, I enjoyed the preparation. Um, you know, I was fortunate that um, being from a Ukrainian family, the food was excellent. So uh, I, I, I enjoyed the Ukrainian food. Uh, you know, the self-esteem you get from uh, throwing far and actually accomplishing things. And it's like life. You know, there's some good days, there's some not so good days, but you have to work through it. You know, and so I have an optimistic uh, credo and, uh, you know, with every um, lemon, there's some lemonade that you can make. Uh, yeah. Now, what, what do you think, and, and this, I guess you could consider this a political question. Yeah. Uh, we've got the Paris Olympics coming up yeah. uh, and, and, and Olympics are in a sense about ideals, mm -hmm. uh, human ideals, achievement ideals. Yeah. Uh, to what extent is it correct? Uh, or not correct to let athletes, for example, from Russia, uh, to be participating in, in an Olympics, yeah. in, in global Olympics. Yeah, well, I understand things, but I understand it from a Ukrainian perspective. And uh, I was, you know, I boycotted uh, the 80 Olympics. Uh, I didn't want to, but the Russians again invaded Afghanistan. I understand the Russian uh, mentality and the brutality from a Ukrainian perspective. So I, uh, and they're all military. Every athlete is involved with the military. So I am in favor of the Russians never competing in the Olympics. Um, unfortunately, uh, as an athlete, I understand the frustration. Politics shouldn't be in there, but politics are in there. And I agree with the, that the Russia should not compete because uh, if not 100% of them, a high percentage are involved with military and they have Putin's support and it's a propaganda machine. So I agree uh, that Russia should never compete in the Olympics. Well, that's a very, very, very strong statement. Yes, it is. Uh, coming, uh, coming from uh, an Olympian that, that has to uh, unfortunately realize the, the bigger reality. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, yes, I, I boycotted 1980. It was supposed to be my swan song, so I, it, it was a hard pill to swallow. But this is different. You've got Russia invading Ukraine. It's barbaric. And uh, the Russian people, the Russian athletes should stand up to that. And I'm sorry, I have no, uh, no sympathy for, for the, the Russian athletes. Um, I understand the frustration, and some of them are probably not political, and I understand there's a dilemma. They can't speak out because just the way Putin is and the, the Russian area could be blackmailing the family, so they have to make decisions. But uh, I agree with uh, the Russians should not compete in the Olympics for the, for the only reason is because of the invasion of Ukraine. And I stand by that 100%. Now, uh, let's get a little back into <laughs> like what you know best, training. Yeah. Uh, how do you, like, you went through it all. How can you see uh, what an athlete or a potential athlete has in themselves? And how do you guide them along? Like, you, you said a contradiction in your very first statement. You, you got ready yeah. for, the, for, for, for a tour, for, for a, uh, a tournament in, in a week, right? And yeah. then you say it takes eight years to get ready for the Olympics. So which one of those is true? Well, they're both true. Okay. I had the week to prepare. I was never exposed to that, so I learned by doing. And fortunately, I met a coach that uh, kind of steered me in the right way. And uh, yes, at an Olympic level, at a high end, it takes a minimum of eight years. I mean, some people may do it shorter, some people take longer, but it's, uh, it's discipline. You've got to train. You've got to deal with injuries. Uh, it's not recreational. It's, it's uh, like a full-time job. And I was fortunate because I had athletic scholarships, so I was able to get an education, a good, very good education, while I was pursuing my dreams. Of, so it was fitness, it was mind, body, and spirit, you know, and uh, those were the Greek ideals. And uh, um, it just takes a lot of time and there's a lot of frustrations. I had many injuries. 
Uh, I have two hip replacements right now. I've had knee surgery, I've had foot surgery. Thankfully, my transmission, my heart and the brain is, uh, is still functioning. Um, so I, I'm at 71 years of age, I paid a price in terms of athletics. So competitive athletics is not necessarily healthy. I wouldn't change anything. I would go for it. I would have trained a little differently, a little smarter. But, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm still active. I'm still moving. So what is like that? There comes a moment and it's I can't do it. Yeah. How, how do you change that? It's into? hard. It's hard. I, I was fortunate because I had a career to go to. You know, so I knew that my my last Olympics would have been 1980 and unfortunately was was not able to um, compete there. But I had a career to fall back. So I channeled my energy into chiropractic medicine, uh, developing a successful practice. I enjoy working with uh, people, getting them better. Uh, I worked with athletes as well. And many of my patients are in the 80s and 90s right now. So I'm helping them along, too. So I was lucky that or I, may, I should say I was prepared to, to put all my energy into something else, and, and you have to be prepared. I know athletes that are prepared and they are doing well right now. Some people who their, their career was athletics and they didn't prepare, and it's hard to deal with that, you know, because the highlights of your athletic career, there's nothing like it. Walking in the Olympics, competing, winning medals, you know, the sweat, the toil, uh, there's nothing like that, you know. So you live through it. I still keep in contact with some of my teammates from the University of Washington and the Canadian Olympic team. I'm fortunate enough that I helped them with health, with their health problems as well. So I'm I'm very active. I'm very active. My dad told me never to retire. I'm 71, and I'm just going to keep doing it until I can't do it anymore. I enjoy every moment. And on that wonderful moment, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen, Dan <laughs> Boris Samul. Yeah, thank you. World, world class Canadian Olympic Commonwealth champion. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuri. Yeah.